Hi everyone, I'm Karen Peterson from Orlando, Florida, and I chose Stephen King's It. In Franklinville, New York, 1993, this book was banned because a parent complained that the book described explicit sexual acts, used violence, and profane language. And for me, Tim Curry was an amazing clown who I've been terrified since ever the movie came out. It by Stephen King. Part one, The Shadow Before. Chapter one, After the Flood, 1957. The terror, which would not end for another 28 years, if it ever did end, began. So far as I know or can tell, with a boat made from a sheet of newspaper floating down a gutter swollen with rain. The boat bobbed, listed, righted itself again, dived bravely through treacherous whirlpools, and continued on its way down Wickham Street toward the traffic light which marked the intersection of Wickham and Jackson. The three vertical lenses on all sides of the traffic light were dark on this afternoon in the fall of 1957. And the houses were all dark too. There had been a steady rain for a week now, and two days ago the winds had come as well. More sections of dairy had lost their power then, and it was not back on yet. A small boy in a yellow slicker and red galoshes ran cheerfully along beside the newspaper boat. The rain had not stopped, but it was finally slacking. It tapped on the yellow hood of the boy's slicker, sounding to his ears like the rain on, their shed of, on a roof shed a comfortable, almost cozy sound. The boy in the yellow slicker was George Dembra. He was six. His brother William, known to most of the kids at Derry Elementary School, and even to the teachers who would never have used the nickname to his face, a stuttering Bill, was at home, hacking up the last of a nasty case of influenza. In the autumn of 1957, eight months before the real horrors began, and 28 years before the final showdown, stuttering Bill was 10 years old. Bill had made a boat beside which George now ran. He had made it sitting up in bed with his back propped against a pile of pillows while their mother played furry lease on the piano in the parlor and the rain swept restlessly against his bedroom window. About three quarters of the way down the block as one headed towards the intersection and the dead traffic light, Wickham Street was blocked by motor traffic, by smudge pots, and four orange sawhorses. Stenciled across each of the horses was Derry Department of Public Works. Beyond them, the rain had spilled out of the gutters, clogged with branches and rocks and big sticky piles of autumn leaves. The water had first pried finger holes in the paving and then snatched the whole, the whole greedy handfuls. All of this by the third day of the rains. By noon on the fourth day, big chunks of the street's surface were boating through the intersection of Jackson and Wickham, like miniature white water rafts. By that time, many people in Derry had begun to make nervous jokes about arcs. The Public Works Department managed to keep Jackson Street open, but Wickham was impassable from the sawhorses all the way down to the center of town. But everyone agreed the worst was over.